Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. I know that this morning's briefing might seem like something more suited for Friday's crime report, but the reason I decided to highlight this today is because of the similarities to other cases. Ruby Johnson is a retired postal worker who lives in Denver, Colorado. Two years ago, she became the target of the local thugs with badges, and as with everything else the cops do, it was a mistake. It began with a report of a truck having been stolen. There was no picture or idea of who the thief was, but the owner of the stolen truck said that he had put four semi-automatic handguns, a rifle, a revolver, two drones, $4,000 in cash, and an iPhone inside of the truck before it was stolen. Now, the owner of the truck used the Find My app to track the phone to the general area that was close to Mrs. Johnson's home, and he passed that information on to the police. That was mistake number one. Ruby Johnson was just getting out of the shower that morning when the SWAT team surrounded her house, got on a bullhorn, and demanded that she come out with her hands up. I'm not making that up or exaggerating. That's exactly what they did. They showed up to this elderly retiree's home in full military gear with an armored personnel carrier that the bastards parked on her front lawn. She came out all right wearing only her bathrobe and a bonnet. The police held her at gunpoint. Now, as the police, they had to have known who lived there. They knew that this was a woman who lived by herself, an elderly old lady. This was a stolen truck that they were allegedly looking for, not a terrorist cell. So why did they send in the SWAT team at all? And why did these guys show up, armored personnel carrier, tons of cops, all decked out in military gear? Though, as we all know, the police are the biggest terrorist organization in America. Now, you might be wondering, was this raid intentionally hostile? Were the intentions of these white officers who terrified this elderly black woman an act of malice? Well, consider this. The police used a battering ram to get into Miss Johnson's garage, even after she had explained to them how to open the door. They didn't have to damage her property. They wanted to damage it. They ransacked and searched her house and found nothing, of course, and didn't find anyone there. But they still acted like they were on an episode of CSI Denver or something. Desperate to find anything to try to justify their illegal raid, they decided to go inside Miss Johnson's attic, because apparently I guess they must have thought that the truck was up there. The officers broke a ceiling panel using the handle of her kitchen broom. They were using her own household items to destroy and vandalize her house. This was not a search. This was just vandalism. They stood on top of one of her brand new dining room chairs, according to the lawsuit. They also broke the head off of a doll that had been created to look just like her, complete with the glasses. The vandalizing of Miss Johnson's house took hours, but predictably, the police found nothing. All the while, they had been holding Miss Johnson in the back of a police car as if she was some sort of dangerous criminal when they were the criminals. Now, after this illegal search was over, the ACLU represented Miss Johnson in a lawsuit against two of the criminals who attacked her and destroyed her home. Detective Gary Stab and the supervisor who approved the fraudulent search warrant, Sergeant Gregory Bushy. They were sued under a Colorado law that had been passed after the murder of George Floyd. This law gave victims of police violence the right to sue individual officers for violating the state constitution. In other words, this law helps to strip the bastards of their qualified immunity in civil cases. And just this week, the jury awarded Miss Ruby Johnson $3.8 million. Now, according to reports, the Denver police were not the ones who were sued. Only the two officers who were most responsible for this illegal raid. So I'm assuming that the money is meant to come from the two thugs with badges bank accounts, assuming they have anything. But there's also something else that needs to be mentioned, and this is the reason for this morning's briefing. As the ACLU stated in their lawsuit, the warrant that had been issued that authorized the illegal search of Miss Johnson's home was issued on Defendant Stab's hastily prepared bare-bones misleading affidavit. The sole basis he identified for connecting the crime to Ms. Johnson's address was the truck theft victim's use of Apple's Find My app to try to track an old iPhone that was in the stolen truck. But contrary to Stab's representations to the reviewing judge, use of the app in fact made clear that the iPhone's location could not be accurately identified, and there was zero basis to single out Ms. Johnson's home. So the police never informed the judge that the app that was used to get a location on the phone wasn't precise at all, and that it only provided a general location. So why did they decide to raid Miss Johnson's home? She's black, that's why. So this illegal raid was based on a fraudulent search warrant obtained by lies. Now, why does this sound so familiar? White officers lying to get a search warrant for a home of a black resident when they knew it wasn't the right place. 
storming a black woman's residence while she was totally undressed, ransacking her home and destroying her property. Why does that sound so familiar? Because this is exactly how the Louisville police murdered Breonna Taylor. In that case, the Louisville PD deliberately lied in their affidavit for the fraudulent no-knock warrant when they falsely claimed that Breonna Taylor had had drugs sent to her address even though they knew that the local post office had told them there were no suspicious packages sent to her apartment. That fraudulent affidavit directly led to the murder of Breonna Taylor. And there was also another case similar to Miss Johnson's, Anne Jeanette Young, whose home was raided by the Chicago police, who made her stand naked for minutes on end while handcuffed. In that case, the city of Chicago was forced to settle Miss Young's lawsuit for $2.9 million. In the case of Mrs. Young, the demented perverts tried to lie their way out of it, but at least one of these creeps was fired. But what's called for, though, is not a firing, but for these criminals to be put in a cage. So when the police do these things, they are not accidents, they're deliberate. They know who lives at these places, they do surveillance beforehand, they get city records to find out who lives there, how many people, and for how long. They have a whole dossier on their victims prepared in advance for their attack. They don't just show up at these places sight unseen with no idea who's there or what's going on. In the case of Mrs. Johnson, they had body cameras on, so they knew that they wouldn't be able to lie about being fired upon or seeing a gun. But in this case, they did everything short of open fire on Miss Johnson. They roused this woman out of the shower, unnecessarily vandalized her home, threw this elderly woman into the back of a police car, because apparently 77-year-old women are a lethal threat to these brave police, who, we're told, risk their lives every day, apparently to arrest little old ladies in the shower. See, when you've been able to rely on racial privilege for hundreds of years, being held to account feels like oppression, don't it? When we say that these are violent marauders, this is what we mean. The police are not and have never been a law enforcement agency. They are a white supremacist, taxpayer-funded street gang. These are gangs of racial marauders. When Joe Biden was misappropriating money from COVID relief funds and funneling it to these domestic terrorists, this was what he's been subsidizing. And even after this, we still have to watch these cases because there have been lawsuits where some racist judge reduces the jury award simply to show their sick solidarity with the thugs in blue. These judges are every bit as guilty and deserving of punishment as the cops. These lawsuits are nowhere near as common as they need to be. Police know that prosecutors won't bring charges, which is what happened in the case of Mrs. Johnson and Miss Young. The DAs didn't do anything. They also know that crooked judges will cover for them and try to protect them. The public is now turned against the thugs in blue, and the white media can't do anything about it. But between the corrupt DAs and the judges... The police still have a wall between them and the justice that they deserve. But even so, making their crimes financially ruinous is only one part of an overall plan of attack to break the backs of the thugs in blue. There must also be harsher criminal penalties. What I would like to see is an independent special prosecutor appointed in all police shooting cases. But the special prosecutor should be chosen by the victim. Or, in cases where the police have murdered a citizen, by the families of the victims. These special prosecutors certainly cannot be appointed by the courts. These cases need to be prosecuted by someone who's actually trying to put these criminals in a cage. Also, grand jury proceedings must be made public. As I've chronicled for you time and again, grand juries are kept secret, not in the interest of protecting jurors. If that was the case, then they would do it for trial juries. Grand juries are kept secret so prosecutors can bury cases that they don't want to bring to trial, and to be able to do it behind a shield of anonymity so that they're protected from the righteous wrath of the voters. We saw this with Daniel Cameron when he illegally buried the prosecution of Breonna Taylor's killers by lying to the grand jury and telling them, we don't need to bring any charges. So in the case of Ms. Johnson, she was able to get some measure of justice, though it remains to be seen if she can collect. It is good that she was able to personally drag the criminals who assaulted her into court and able to exact her pound of flesh from them personally. This is what's called for from the public, an all-out offensive. On a side note, the Aryan propagandist piece predictably says that the lawsuit doesn't allege that race played a role in this illegal raid. Now, for everyone with common sense, we all know that this illegal raid happened in Colorado, the same Colorado where Elijah McLean was murdered. Of course the lawsuit didn't say that race played a role. What's understood doesn't have to be said. But you know what does have to be said? What do you call it when the police are finally held to account and punished to the harshest extent of the law? You call it a good start. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. R. Laz, Canel Bender, G. Mars, Sabrina, and Neil Safir. 
Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.